Good afternoon, everybody. We want to welcome you to our webinar here. We are so fortunate to have our PBS folks joining us along with our IU 12, 13, and 15 partners. This webinar is on using PBS resources to support social and emotional learning and the Ready, Set, Music program. Um, you are in a Zoom webinar room. Um, my name is Ben Smith. I'm the Assistant Director of Technology at the Lincoln Intermediate Unit. I just want to give you a little bit of uh, background on the room that you're in before we turn it over to our presenters. Uh, in this particular case, um, you won't be able to unmute or share your video, but you will be able to see the presenters. Um, there is a Q&A pod. So if you have questions, we would ask you to populate those questions to the Q&A pod so that our presenters and panelists are able to make those answers public to everybody. In addition, you will be able to chat, although we won't be monitoring the chat for questions, you are able to use the chat. So with that, I am going to turn it over to our PBS folks for their presentation. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Debbie, you are up. Thanks, Ben. Um, we can just go to the next slide. We're excited to be able to share um, several pieces of um, what is available on both the PBS Kids site and on the Pennsylvania PBS site to be able to support social and emotional learning in your classrooms. Um, I'd like to introduce, um, so again, I'm Debbie, I'm the Director of Education at WITF, and I'd like to introduce Kathy who is the Director of Education Projects at WQED, and Gina Masio, Gina, pronounce your last name for me so I don't... Masiola. Okay, that's what I was going to say, but then I got scared. Um, Gina is the Director of Education Partnerships at WQED, and today we're going to be talking about, if you want to go to the next slide... We are gonna be talking about both, again, the social emotional learning resources that are available through PBS and um, our Ready, Set, Music program, which is relatively new um, and a, um, a resource that we've created through a partnership with all of the stations uh, throughout Pennsylvania, all of the public media stations throughout Pennsylvania, the Department of Education and our IU partners. So we are very excited to share that with you. And I wanna start by turning this over to Kathy and Gina. Thanks, Debbie. I'm gonna share my screen. So just give me two seconds to get my screen up. And while Gina's doing that, I will just say that um, once again, I'm Kathy Cook from WQED in Pittsburgh, and we're thrilled to be here with state partners to bring you some of these resources. Um, Gina and I have talked a lot about the social emotional tools that are available through PBS Kids and such as the ones that our fabulous state partners have created. And typically when we talk about these resources, it's usually about a three hour training. So we're just gonna give you a chunk and try to focus on some of the things that comes from our friend, um, Daniel Tiger from Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood and really the musical strategies that PBS is so great at using um, in order to help kids with their self-regulation, self-concept, all the fabulous social emotional tools that we feel are our littlest learners and maybe even all the way up to adult learners could use. Um, so quickly, I'll just take you through a brief overview of the pbskids.org webpage. It's actually designed to be user friendly with even our littlest learners. So um, Gina's going to go ahead and play the video and I'll just walk you through. What you want to do is type in pbskids.org into your browser and then it pulls up the home page and the home page changes, but you'll notice the character wheel in the middle and that takes you to um, some of your favorite PBS Kids shows. When you hover over the character face, the name of the show, the title of the show shows up in the center of the wheel. And when you hover over the arrows, that will spin the wheel. The characters that are featured inside the wheel are just what's popular or current right now. Um, but you can go to all shows by clicking on the all shows tab and it takes you to all shows. And you'll notice probably some of your favorites blasts from the past. Um, a favorite in our house was always Zoom, and so you can find shows like that here. They clicked on Peg Plus Cat, and that takes you to Peg Plus Cat's subsite. And on each of the characters' subsite, you'll find things like games, videos, and printables. 
they chose games and they clicked on the magical shape hunt. And you can just start playing right from the website. If you'd like to get back to the main character page, you just always can click on the PBS Kids logo and it brings you back. In order to see more games, you can scroll down with the arrow and then you'll see new games, popular games and hard games. The hard games tab is really nice, especially if your child is aging up and um, you can just find a little bit more difficult games there. You can also click on the games tab and it takes you to featured games. You can also search by the characters faces here. And my favorite way to find games is by topic. So if you scroll down to more topics and click on that, it takes you to different learning goals or different topics of games. And so you can see there's reading games, vocabulary games, and I believe they're gonna click on shape games. And once again, it takes you back, there's the Peg Plus Cat shape game. But if you keep scrolling down, you can see that there's a whole bunch of games that all relate to shapes and you can click on them from there. So that's just a quick and easy overview. You could see that there's not a lot of language on that page and that kids are able to navigate that on their own. It's a really great page too, to find some of the video clips. I know that feature showed a lot of how to get to the games, but there's also video clips and music clips within that site as well. But today we're really gonna talk about PBS as a social emotional education tool. Um, and like I said, we're gonna, focus on Daniel Tiger. Um, some of your favorite shows like Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood and Sesame Street really do a great job of um, incorporating social emotional learning strategies in each episode. So each episode of Daniel Tiger has one social and emotional theme and those themes are repeated in different ways so that um, kids can really comprehend what is going on. Um, the theme is explored, it says right there, in a relatable, generalizable, and not preachy way, which we love. And because of the repetition of the episodes, it really does help to ensure comprehension. Um, and as you can see, the thing we're focusing on today a little bit is the musical strategies. And Daniel Tiger is great at um, helping us with those musical strategies. And once you hear a Daniel Tiger song, it gets stuck in your head. And that's kind of the point. And that really does help kids. So we're going to turn it over to Gina and she's going to tell you a little bit more. Hi, thanks, Kathy. Um, so I think one of the things that's really important and um, as early childhood educators and people that work adjacent to early childhood educators. One of the things that we know is that it's so important um, for social emotional development um, to actually feed into academic success. So we know that when kids are socially emotionally ready, when they can share, when they can sit, when they know routines um, and all of those wonderful things that their academic success is um, actually greater and you've got a um, greater chance um, for children to uh, be able to scaffold learning. So um, that being said, um, we really want to take a, a little bit of a deep dive into social and emotional learning, um, specifically with Daniel Tiger and how um, some of the resources um, that align with music can really help you um, and parents um, and early childhood educators um, to connect some of the dots um, when you're talking about social and emotional learning. So we really want to focus right now um, specifically for an example on self-concept and um, how children see themselves as um, valuable and worthwhile um, individuals in their homes, their classrooms, and communities. Um, we are going to um, look at um, an actual classroom um, that has some early child, um, that has some um, children in it, and an early childhood educator. Um, you're going to watch um, how she uses some of the Daniel Tiger music strategies um, and resources um, in her classroom. So let's take a look at Shannon from the Allegheny Intermediate Unit Head Start. Feel the music.
So while Gina is trying to figure out the audio, I'll just tell you that the game really is about how music has different. Happy. Music. And when we're happy, happy. our faces look happy. happy. We smile. So true. Go ahead and touch the flowers and the instruments and hear how it makes a happy sound. Go ahead. We'll get you next, Parker, okay? What about the blue? Can you hear how it sounds kind of happy? Now, what about the instruments? You want to touch the instruments? Go ahead. Let's add some music to it. Um, Shannon, and she was using a smart board in her classroom. Um, I just want to go a minute to show you a little bit about how Shannon incorporated um, her, what she would use every day, like instruments, um, as part of this um, play group that she was leading, and how she pulled from the resource of the Daniel Tiger um, game. That game that you saw Shannon playing is also an app that you can download as well from PBS Kids, and it's free. Gina, the sound's not working again, so I'll just talk. So um, Shannon is passing out musical instruments. That is we'll do one at a time. I'm going to make my drum sound happy. Does that sound a little happy, Big Speed? Feel happy. I'm going to make that happy. Okay, let's have true. Like that, Parker. Make your symbols. How do you think they would sound if you were happy? It makes me happy. That made you happy? And what about you, Lanaya? How would the triangle sound for happy? Ooh, I like it. So we did happy. What's the other one we did? Sad. get the idea of how Shannon used um, everyday um, items that she has in her preschool that she would use at any, uh, at any other time to help support um, the strategies that she was um, pulling from Daniel Tiger um, and the music and the music to help her. Um, Shannon also did some home visits and so if you're working one-on-one -on -one with children um, 
she used the Daniel Tiger strategies um, to help um, and the and what she had uh, with those kids to help express anger. Um, she was also trying to figure out um, what makes children mad. Um, and we talked about how you feel when you're mad using that musical piece from Daniel Tiger. Um, she lists out four things here um, that are everyday things that usually make uh, little ones upset. When her brother or sister pick on her, when somebody hurts her, when nobody plays with her, um, and when she doesn't get what she wants. So um, it was really nice that she's able to list those out. Um, again, something that's really nice is she's using painting um, and she was painting along with listening to music um, and trying to de-escalate. All right, so I'm gonna turn this back over to Debbie. Okay, so thanks you guys. Um, we know that, that PBS has a really rich history in helping children understand how they feel and incorporating that through music. When I was a little girl, it, it was Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, right? Um, it was interesting, I was listening to a radio show where they were interviewing um, people who worked on the uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood show and they played a clip of what to do with the mad that you feel, that song. And if any of you grew up listening to Mr. Rogers, as soon as um, they were playing it, I remembered all the words, like all of them. <laughs> it's been a long time since um, I listened to what to do with the mad that you feel, but it came right back. And I think that part of what is so magical about using music to help children understand what's happening inside them is the fact that it does, it is one of those things that integrates itself so deeply in who we are that it helps us um, kind of create messages we want to create for children um, inside their heads. So we know that as adults, right, we can have um, sort of uh, self messages going through our own heads, children do too. And if we can help them have those messages be positive and constructive, that's a really good thing. So, um, we developed Ready, Set, Music sort of based on that model, that um, Fred Rogers model of what messages do we want children, especially during this time where things are so, um, high, the complication of children's lives is really heightened. Um, how can we share messages to them that are positive, that they can hear in different ways that make sense to them? And how can we use that in a classroom setting? So. Um, you can find um, the Ready, Set, Music resource at this link, um, and we are going to actually navigate there. We're going to one of the songs, there are four songs present on that site right now, and we're going to look at one of those songs and a little bit about some other resources that are on the page. So this is sort of the page that you land on when you get to Ready, Set, Music. If you scroll down just a little bit more, um, you'll see the elements that are on every page. This page itself is really just an explainer to help you understand. So um, there, if you can pull up just a bit, um, the each, each page has the song, the actual performance of the song with a video. Um, and it's not just performed by the person who wrote the song, um, but it's performed by other local to central Pennsylvania artists. So it was pretty wonderful that we were able to tap into all different kinds of musical genres and what an interesting way to explore that element with children. We also included a printable social story on each page that is available in English and Spanish. You can print it in either one. And each page also has a series of activities um, that are set to standards. So there's a think about it activity that is really for me like an um, let's get our brains thinking about a topic, a reflection time, a do it activity, which gets kids moving and up, um, something to make in the make it section, a way to share what they're feeling and thinking, and then a um, recommended book list for each of those things. As you think about using this resource, and we're gonna go to a page and actually explore um, one of the songs, the um, Be Your Best Self song, but as you think about 
how you could utilize this in the classroom. There are some tips on each one of these, that homepage on each one of these sections. But I really think about these resources as really appropriate for when you're gathering students, if you're in a virtual environment, when you're bringing kids in, when you're um, starting your day in a classroom um, as, a, as a sort of a transition time, as a brain break. Um, I think these resources are, uh, are really rich and you can pull different of the activities together if you want to build out a lesson or you can use them in just those spots where you're trying to um, trying to kind of uh, fill that last few minutes like maybe towards the end of the day or the beginning of the day um, okay so let's go to um, at the very top you can navigate um, so you'll see that ready set music is that home page um, and then there are four sort of tealish bubbles those are the four songs um, let's go to Be Your Best Self. So on this page, you'll see on the like the left hand side, all the performance videos, <laughs> you could also sign up to get the newsletter. Um, you'll see all the performance videos. Um, Mr. Music is um, the person who actually performed the original song, wrote the song, and then below that Milan and Jess and um, uh, there's another version we'll talk about too that is that same song performed in American Sign Language. Um, all of those videos are the same song but interpreted in very different ways. And I think one of the most interesting things about um, these resources is that piece about being able to um, compare those two. How do they sound the same? How do they sound different and why? I think that's really interesting. So let's listen. Um, we're going to listen to Mr. Music and then we're going to listen to Milan's version and then we'll take a peek at the ASL one. You can go ahead and play. Be, be your, be your best, be your best self. In the classroom, even if it's Zoom, come on, get in the game. Cause we need you there and we love to share. It's nice when the whole team does the same and be, be your, be your best, be your best self. Sometimes it feels like things just didn't go right. Still, you tried your best all day. We are proud of you, all the good you do. We are with you all the way and be. Be your, be your best, be your best self. To make a choice that's smart, here's where you start. You use your head, listen to your heart. You better believe we're here to help as you can see. Time for you to be. Be your, be your best, be your best self. So that's the original version and that's actually what we shared with all of the artists um, when they went to actually create their own versions of this song and we didn't give them any other specifications um, and then they all performed that song in their own style so let's listen to Milan's <laughs> Be your best, be your best self. In the classroom, even at the zone, come on and give me a game. Cause we need you there, and it's like the same. We love when the whole team does the same. Be, 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 be your best self, be, be, be your best, be your best self. Sometimes it feel like it just didn't go right. Still playing the best all day. We are proud of you, you know the good you do. Be your, be your best, be your best self, be to make a choice that's smart. Here's when you start. You just listen to your heart. You better believe as you can see. Time for you be your best, be your best self, be be your, be your best, be your best self, be be your, be your best, be your best self, be be your, be your best, be your best self, be be your. Be your best, be your best self. So both the songs have the same lyrics, um, which are also provided on that page. And um, if you scroll down, we're not gonna listen to Jess who does a country version of the song, but I do want you to just take a quick peek at the ASL version. Um, we have students who are performing the song along with the original 
um, version of the song, but in sign. So we'll just take a quick, uh, quick check at that. Be, be your, be your best, be your best self in the classroom, even if it's Zoom. Come on, get in the game, cause we need you there and we love to share. It's nice when the whole team does the same and be. Okay, so we can scroll be. down a little bit more. Um, that there are ASL versions of um, two songs. I think all, actually all three of the four of the songs have ASL versions attached to them. Um, you can see that printable social story that's available both in English or in Spanish, and you can just click on that. Um, it'll come up as a um, PDF and you can print it. Um, and that's really a nice resource. Um, so each student could have their own um, and it just reinforces the message and the concepts that are in the song. Um, students could certainly, you know, color them or decorate them if they wanted to. But our goal was that um, you could have that literacy component while still reinforcing the messages of the song. If you scroll down a little bit more. Um, you'll see that activity section. The right under the blue tealish word activities, you'll see those five um, elements that we talked about at the very beginning: the think about it, um, the do it, the make it, the share it, and the read about it. If you just want to click on, we'll just click on make it. Um, it gives you some examples of activities you could do um, that are based in the song. They're all to standard. Some of them have links that take you to other places to explore, or it might be a printable. Um, and that, I think that's a really helpful resource. And depending on the kind of learner, or if you want to be able to pull elements for lots of different learners in your classroom, the idea that there's um, both some uh, creativity creative elements that you can make and build. There are things you can do, there are things you can read. I think that's really, really helpful as you're planning out some activities in your classroom. Okay, if you wanna go all the way back to the top, one of the other elements we were exploring as part of this project was using music in general. So if you click on the pink Music Matters button, you can see um, a number of other elements. So um, one of the things that was important to me having worked in classrooms um, for a really long time is that sometimes you just want some background music, right? Um, so the Ready, Set, Music playlist, it is video, um, but you can also just utilize it as audio, right? Um, and it is every one of the songs that we have available right now on the Ready, Set, Music site, but it is... Um, shuffled. So it's like a pre-shuffled version of the songs. So you won't hear four, you know, four versions of one song and then four versions of another. Um, they'll be um, mixed throughout. And so that's really how I think it's helpful um, so that um, kids can have that. You could have that in the background. There is a video, we're not going to watch those today, about um, encouraging kids to write their own songs, um, which is that second one. And then sort of like behind the scenes, how did um, a song get written? Um, so those could be used as a complimentary, uh, both available as a, as a lesson. And then if you, yep, you're right where you should be. Um, you can see there are five additional tabs across the top with different activities, multiple activities um, in each one of those areas to do various activities with music. If you pull down a little bit or go up a little bit more, I'm sorry, I'm giving poor directions. We wanna go down the screen. There you go. Um, each one of the artists that are featured on the um, page has um, an interview that you, um, these are all like written versus um, like a video themselves. But each one of these, Nick DeSanto, he builds those musical instruments. It's so interesting. And what an interesting thing for kids to be able to do too. But um, they talk, we asked them to talk a little bit about what music meant to them, what, um, this, their style of music, what it is and why it's that way and why that's important to them. Um, and that could be a really interesting music appreciation piece. Or if you find that um, kids really identify with one of the performers a lot, um, you can learn a little bit more about them. And again, um, we can probably go back to the PowerPoint. Thanks. Um, again, what's interesting to me is that 
you can do a lot of things with this resource as you can with a lot of the things you'll find on PBS. Um, all of those resources are designed to sort of pr present to you a platform that you can utilize in whatever way you need to in your classroom, depending on the students that you have in those spaces. So um, as we go to our last slide and we share our emails with you, um, we're happy to answer questions. But I would also say that if you find that you um, try Ready, Set, Music resources and you want to share sort of your thoughts about them, please feel free to email any of us because we would love to hear your feedback. If there is an element that you're like, you know what would make this really, really great and really, really helpful or easier, um, please share that with us um, as we, because we're going to be building out more um, songs for this page. And so it will be growing. Um, and also if there are specific social um, and emotional learning messages that would be helpful to your students, we would love to hear about those too. So we're happy to take any questions. Should someone have them? If you have any questions, please just pop them into the Q&A pod and we will get to those as soon as we can. One, one of the questions could be, why was my face on fire for part of the webinar? It was so, it, it was very sunny here. That's quite bright. I w Hi Not a question, to all of our webinars. Hey, thank you for you guys. Ben, I wanted to just add one thing that was in um, the webinar that um, on the Ready, Set, Music, this is Sue Voigt from the Capital Area Intermediate Unit, and I was here as one of the groups. On all of the Ready, Set, Music pages, there are extra resources that if you need some background information um, that have been linked out, sometimes they are articles, sometimes they are strategies, but there is a green box on all of the pages with resources that are hyperlinked for you. That's true. That's a good point. Thanks, Sue. So we did get a, it says, it's not a question, but I love the idea of using musical instruments with kids to show the different emotions. Great idea and thanks. Yeah, we tried to think about all of the arts, sort of how they all fit together. So there are elements, sort of what Gina was talking about, the painting to music, the um, sh like, how do we move when we're angry? How do we move when we're sad? Um, that kind of, those kind of activities are all present and such a standard on the Ready, Set, Music site. Thanks for dropping that link in. So there is a link in the chat if you want to explore more. All right. So again, on behalf of uh, IU 12, 13, and 15, as well as our PBS partners from across the state, we want to thank everybody for coming to this Ready, Set, Music webinar. Uh, please note that we will be that we have recorded it and we will be posting to uh, several of our YouTube channels so you can go back and take a look at this. If you're registered, which you are, you will be able to get access to it. So thank you guys.